In this lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. So let's just review that we have seven different indeterminate forms. We have 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, infinity minus infinity, 0 times infinity, and three different um, power indeterminate forms. We have 0 to the 0, um, infinity to the 0, and 1 to the infinity. Okay, so we have these seven different forms, and we also just want to review what L'Hopital's rule says. So L'Hopital's rule says that if we have um, two differentiable functions, f and g, and g prime of x is not zero um, near a, except possibly at a, and if we have the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is an indeterminate form of either of these two types, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then we can say that the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x, as long as this limit on the right hand side exists or can be found to be equal to infinity or negative infinity. So I want to go through and practice um, a few more examples of applying this rule. Here's another example where I've got a product. So again, I'm going to want to um, do a little bit of algebra to, to convert it into a um, quotient, but we want to first see what kind of form I have. So if I look at what's happening to each of these pieces as I approach infinity, as x goes to infinity, x cubed is going to infinity. So as x goes to infinity, x cubed is going to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, e to the negative x squared is going to 0 because this is really 1 over e to the x squared. So as um, x squared gets really large, I have e to the x squared getting really large. So 1 divided by a very large number is 0. So I have something here that's of the form infinity times 0. So that tells me that my next step should be to rewrite this as a quotient. So easy way to do it when I've got negative exponents is just move that to the denominator. So now I have x cubed over e to the x squared. So looking at this, I see I have something that's of the form infinity over infinity, which is a form where I can use L'Hopital's rule. So in the next step, I can go ahead and take the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So I'm going to have 3x squared all over, and the derivative of e to the x squared using the chain rule is going to be e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared. So we have 2x e to the x squared. So looking at this, looks like I still have something of the form infinity over infinity. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule again. So I've got the limit as x goes to infinity of 6x all over. Now in the denominator, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So I have 2x times the derivative of e to the x squared. So that's going to be 2x e to the x squared plus e to the x squared times the derivative of 2x. I'm going to have plus 2e to the x squared. Okay. So let's just simplify this a little bit. But it doesn't look like it's so much better yet. Let's see, I've got 4x squared e to the x squared plus 2e to the x squared. Looks like I still have something that's like infinity over infinity. Because this denominator here, I'm adding two things that are getting very large as x goes to infinity. And so we know that infinity plus infinity is not indeterminate. It's just infinity. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule again. And that's going to be helpful for me because that's going to eliminate the x that's in the numerator. So I'm going to end up with 6 all over, and now I've got to do the product rule again. So I have 4x squared times the derivative of e to the x squared, which is 2x e to the x squared, plus e to the x squared times the, the derivative of 4x squared, which is 8x. Then I would have plus 2e to the x squared times 2x. So there's a whole bunch of terms in that denominator. So let's just go ahead and rewrite this. I've got 6 all over. Let's see, this is 8x cubed e to the x squared plus 8x e to the x squared plus 4x e to the x squared. Okay. So looking at this, I see I've got this number 6 in my, my numerator. Um, that's a messy infinity. In the denominator, I've got something going to infinity plus something going to infinity plus something going to infinity. So I have 
a number divided by a really large number, so my limit is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so we did three applications of L'Hopital's rule to see that this limit that we started with is in fact equal to zero as x goes to infinity. Okay, so what about something that's not, whoops, not a product, but I have something that's a difference. So here I have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. Notice that the minus 1 is not in the, in the power, but it's e to the x and then minus the number 1. Okay, So I have a difference here. So I'm going to have to do some work to turn that difference into something that is a product or a quotient, if what I have here is an indeterminate form. So we look at this and we see that 1 over a small positive number is going to give me infinity. And then here I'd have, that's like e to the 0, so that's something like 1. So I'm going to have, again, a small positive number because I'm going to 0 from the right, so something a little bit bigger than 0. So I'm going to have something just a little bit bigger than 1 in e to that small positive number. So I'm going to have a small positive number. So I'm going to end up with um, infinity in for this second limit as well. So I have something that's this indeterminate form of infinity minus infinity. So that tells me that I'm going to have to do some algebra and try to re re uh, rewrite this. So one thing that could be helpful when we've got fractions is try to get a common denominator. So I've got e to the x minus 1. I multiply the, the first one by e to the x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1, and the second one by x over x. I'm going to have that minus x all over x times e to the x minus 1. So I take a look at this and try to see what kind of form I have now. So if I plug in 0, I've got like 1 minus 1, so that's 0. Minus 0 is 0. Okay, so the numerator is 0. If I plug in 0 in the denominator, I'm also going to get 0. So I've got something of the form 0 over 0, so that means that I can now apply L'Hopital's rule. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of e to the x minus 1 all over, and then I'm going to have to use the product rule. So I've got x times the derivative of e to the x minus 1, which is e to the x, plus e to the x minus 1 times 1. Okay. So looking at this, I try to see what kind of form I have. So if I plug in 0, e to the 0 is 1, so I have 1 minus 1, which is 0. And in the denominator, this first term would be 0 if I plugged in 0. e to the 0 would be 1. So again, I have 0 um, over 0. So I'm going to try to apply L'Hopital's rule again. That seems like it could be helpful because when I take the derivative of e to the x minus 1, the 1's going to go away and I'm just going to be left with e to the x. And I know at least when I plug 0 in for e to the x, that's not going to give me 0. Okay, so we just have to look at doing a, a product rule for part of our denominator. So we're going to have x times e to the x plus e to the x plus e to the x. So the first two terms are from doing our product rule, and then e to the x is the derivative of e to the x. So now we see if we can plug in. Well, if I plug in 0 here, e to the 0 is 1. Uh, let's see, this first term is going to be 0. But e to the 0 and e to the 0 are each 1, so it's going to be 1 half. So our final limit in this example ends up being 1 half. So notice that our, our process is taking um, the difference here, turning it into a quotient, and then trying to apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so let's look at another example with a, a difference, and then we'll look at a couple of power examples. So here I have the limit as x goes to infinity of x minus ln x. If I try to plug in infinity here, I have something like infinity minus infinity. And it's not immediately clear how I can maybe combine these. So I have to think a little bit about something that might be helpful. Um, you might think about doing a conjugate, multiplying by x plus ln x over x plus ln x, but that doesn't end up being um, helpful in this case. We'll see some other examples where maybe a conjugate will be helpful, but not always with L'Hopital's rule. Sometimes we'll have to go back and use um, earlier techniques in, in um, examples with square roots. So what else could I do here? Well, one thing that turns out to be helpful is to make use of some log properties. So remember, we know that the log of a minus the log of b is equal to the log of a over b. So if x here was in the form of some kind of log, then maybe I could combine this into a single term. 
Well, remember that we've used e to the ln x equals x. We also know that the natural log of e to the x equals x. So I could rewrite that x as the natural log of e to the x. So now I have the natural log of e to the x minus the natural log of x. So now I can combine that natural log of e to the x minus the natural log of x as the natural log of e to the x all over x. And now using some things about continuity, I can bring that limit inside. So I've got the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x. Okay, so we look, take a look at this and we see that what's inside is this indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So here our indeterminate or form ref, um, refers in particular to our limit. So this is, can be now the natural log, excuse me, of the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x all over 1. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, as x goes to infinity, e to the x is going to infinity. So what's happening to the natural log if the um, inside part is going to infinity? Well, it's just going to infinity. So we get that this limit is equal to infinity. We could also see, maybe another way to see this, is to notice that I can pull that limit um, back outside and I have the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of e to the x, which is just the limit as x goes to infinity of x. So that's another easy way to see that that limit is just going to be equal to infinity. So that was a little trick using our um, logs. So sometimes we just have to do some factoring or um, Let's see, in the previous one we had to combine fractions. Here we had to make use of these log rules. But somehow we're trying to turn a difference into a quotient. Okay. So what about these powers? So we mentioned a little bit about how we were going to do these problems. So we want to work through an example. So here I have x to the power of the square root of x. So the indeterminate form that I have is 0 to the 0. Since x is going to 0, root x is also going to 0. So I want to think about using what I know about the relationship between e and the natural log to help me rewrite this. So this is e to the log of x to the root x. And this equals the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of e to the root x ln x. And then I know this is going to be equal to e to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of root x ln x. So if I can compute this limit, then my final answer is going to be e to some power. Okay. So um, just to kind of save us um, writing all of this, this stuff down, we can come down here and just compute this limit. The limit as x goes to 0 from the right of root x ln x get our answer, and then we're going to put our answer back in this little box that I have here. Okay, So we have our, our um, answer here equals e to this box thing, where this limit okay, is equal to what? Well, we have something here that's of the form 0 times infinity, right? because um, x is going to 0, as x, um, which makes root x go to 0, and as x goes to 0 from the right, the natural log x would be going to negative infinity, so I have something of this form. So I need to use, um, excuse me, rewrite this, this product that I have in terms of a quotient. So I had something of this indeterminate form 0 times infinity, which tells me I should rewrite this as a quotient. So I'm going to write it as the natural log x over, now this was x to the 1 half, so I'm going to write it as x to the negative 1 half and then observe what kind of form I have. Well now I have something like infinity over infinity because this x to the negative one half I could also think of as the limit let's see x goes to zero from the right of the natural log x over one over x to the one half so I have one divided by a small positive number so that's going to be going to infinity. So now we can use L'Hopital's rule so I have a limit as x goes to zero from the right of 1 over x all over, now I'm doing the derivative of x to the negative 1 half, so that's negative 1 half 
x to the negative 1 half minus 1, so that's to the negative 3 halves. So then I might want to do a little bit of algebra to simplify this. So I have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. This is 1 over x divided by, now this is negative 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. So this could be times 2x to the 3 halves um, with a negative sign there. So this simplifies to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of negative 2x to the, let's see, x to the 3 halves divided by x to the 1. So that's going to become x to the 1 half. So I see that that limit comes out to be what? This is 0. OK. Sorry. A little confused with my notes. So this is 0. So then we have to plug 0 in here, and so we get that our final limit is 1. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the right is equal to 1 because it had to be equal to e to this limit. So we took this problem that we had to solve, reduced it to having to just find this limit piece. So that's what we did here. We got that that limit was 0, and then we had to plug that back in. So a lot of times in these power problems, the answer is e to some power. Here it was e to the 0, which simplifies to 1. OK, so let's look at another example. Here I've got the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of x to the 1 over 1 minus x. So I want to see what kind of form I have here. So as x goes to 1, that base is going to 1. Um, and my numerator, excuse me, not my numerator, my power, 1 over 1 minus x is going to something like 1 over 0, um, where, let's see, let, I'm going to 1 from the right. So it's going to be a small negative, so it's going to negative infinity. But we think of that as a 1 to the infinity type form. So I'm going to have to use my um, exponential function in log to write this as e to the ln of x to the 1 over 1 minus x, which then equals the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of e to the 1 over 1 minus x times ln x. So that's going to mean what I really need to be computing is this limit as x goes to 1 from the right of 1 over 1 minus x times ln x. Okay. So I need to go down and figure out what that limit is. So where the limit is x goes to 1 from the right of 1 over 1 minus x times ln x is equal to what? Well, if I go ahead and just write that as a quotient, that's really the natural log x over 1 minus x. If I plug in 1, I've got something of the form 0 over 0. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule to this limit. So I'm going to have 1 over x over negative 1. So this gives me negative 1 in that limit. So then I go back up here and say this is equal to e to the negative 1. So my final limit is 1 over e. Let me know if you have any questions.